thing we need to do is to draw the shape of the horse's head. So I've kind of simplified it a bit by making it down to boxes. Um, so I need to draw two rectangles. They don't have to be perfect in size, but um, say around about six inches. By about four should do, and that's, the, that's going to be the neck. Doesn't have to be a perfect rectangle. Don't worry about getting your um, your angles straight because we're going to draw over this in a second. Um, so that's the neck. Then I need to do the head. So I'm going to draw a smaller rectangle just across the corner, about five and a half by three and a half. And obviously, you can scale up and scale down depending on a bit shorter. Um, the size of the hobby horse that you want to make. And again, that doesn't have to be perfectly square because what we're going to do now is round the whole thing off and make it a little, look a little bit more horse-like. Um, so let's start at the back of the neck. So this is the top of the head and I need to draw this round to the back of the neck. And I'm going to come out slightly to give it some shape across the bottom. So that's the bottom of the hobby horse where the post's going to go. And then on this side, I'm going to just angle that in again to give his neck some shape. This is his chin. So down to the bottom of the chin, just keep that round. Then on the top of the head, I'm going to keep the, the roundness and just give his nose some shape, like so. And I think that looks pretty horsey enough. So I'll just cut out the shape of my template. scissors of course that I'm not going to be cutting fabric with because your paper is going to blunt them. So just keeping his nose round and in. Just stop the head and just roughly down the back of the neck. There. Now I'll need to take two pieces of my main fabric and I'm going to use a strawberry patterned fabric. Turn it over onto the reverse because I don't want the pen marks to be seen on the outside of the fabric. And just fold that over enough so that I'm not wasting too much. And then simply draw around the outside of my template. And then cut out again. I'm not sure if I'm not perfectly within the lines because this isn't a, a true representation of what a horse looks like. It's more like a caricature. I'm going to save the leftover fabric because we're going to have some ears to make later on. Now that's just on a fold so I need to open that up. So there's my horse. The next thing I've done is to cut a strip of fabric which I'm going to use as a gusset and that's going to in effect go all the way around from the two bottom sides, not across the bottom. So I'll cut off the selvage and sew the first sides together face to face with the fabric and I'm just going to use a running stitch to go all the way around the edge. So I'll back tack first to keep the stitches in place and then just keep those two pieces together using quite a small stitch because I'm going to use stuffing and I don't want the stuffing to come out. Then as I get to the corner, you could pin this if it's easier, but I like to just hold the fabric together <coughs> and guide it straight around the corner. So I'm actually moving the whole, the two layers of fabric around. <clears throat> Excuse me, so that the um, the stitch width is the same distance from the edge of the fabric. So I'm taking that quite slowly so I can be accurate because this is quite a sharp bend here. As long as the two pieces are flat, 
that should stretch around quite nicely. If you do get any puckering, then um, simply unpick it and start again because that's not going to look very good from the outside of your project. And just burn that round. Nice and flat, keeping the edges lined up as you move. Then I'm going over the nose area. So this needs to be bent in the opposite direction. Just to make sure I'm still lined up and I'm going to take this really slowly because I'm going around quite a, a deep curve here. Just try and keep those two pieces flat and the same distance from the edge if you can around the edge of the nose it's moved a little bit the fabric on the outside but that's not too important I'm just trying to keep that curve curvy up under the chin now this is a little bit fiddly but bear with me and then guide around underneath the chin. Again, I'm just feeding those two edges together, trying to keep it as flat as I can. You can feel if there's any kind of puckering or creasing underneath. So just smooth that out. And then back down to the straight side. side looks like so when it turns the other way around I've got the side of my horse's head and then this is going to be the gusset so I need to do exactly the same now on the opposite side so face to face again I'm going to start at the same point at the back of the neck so I know that my two sides are lined up evenly and again back tack and stitch all the way around just before I turn it inside out and put the base on I'm just snipping into the curved areas so around his nose just snip up to the stitch mark not through it um, so that it doesn't pucker when you turn it so that's all of the areas that curve inside then what I need to do is to put the base on now because I can't pre-measure the size that this is going to end up I've just cut a circle of fabric out purely by um, drawing around the bottom of a cup and I'm going to pin that in place um, right sides together so my wrong sides out. I know that this uh, base is bigger than the size of my hole but better bigger than smaller and I'm not going to sew all the way around because I need to leave a hole for turning so I'm just going to pin that in place and stitch around the bottom like so And I will have excess fabric left over from the bottom, but I don't mind that because I can always cut that away. So you can see my, my circle shape is starting to form at the base here. It's a little bit fiddly, but if you pin it and do it slowly, then it, it, it'll be fine. So I'm just going to sew around that side first, and then my excess I can cut off after. As you can see, that's going to be that much bigger, but I just want to get it in place first of all and get the, the base section down. So again, take it slowly, and I'm just using my straight stitch. I want to make sure that those sides are lined up. Back tuck it so it doesn't rip the fabric when I turn it. And I'm sewing quite a, a way in from the edge. It doesn't have to be perfectly round. It doesn't matter if it turns out to be an oval or even a square, because this is the bottom of the hobby horse, so you're not really going to see it. So I'm just taking my pins out as I go around so I can manoeuvre the fabric under the needle.
and remember to leave a gap so that you can turn it so another few inches should be fine and then back tack and we're ready for turning so you can see my bottom circle is a bit bigger I'm going to cut that off afterwards and I've just stitched the base part just a, a little way around then I'm going to turn them inside out or the right way around I should say gently easing it through so I don't rip the stitches at the bottom push out his nose, push out his head and then down to the bottom. Then I'll need to stuff him. Now this section I'm going to hand stitch so that'll be done afterwards and I'm just going to use my um, my old pillow wadding again and I'll need to stuff him quite tight because I want him to feel firm and solid <clears throat> and the more stuffing you put in there the fatter he gets and this time I want a nice fat head so push it into the furthest away from the hole part of his head first which is his nose then up into the top of the head it takes quite a bit of wadding so just keep going until it's nice and solid and firm and this is uh, this is where the dowling is going to sit so I want that to be quite compact to hold that in place as well we'll do that when I've sewn the bottom up so just keep going going Nice and firm. Make sure it's not lumpy. You can move the, the wadding around so it gets a nice smooth finish. And just keep packing that in until it's solid all the way down. And I think that should do. Now what I need to do, remember my circle at the bottom was a little bit bigger, that's fine. I need to tuck that in and then I'm going to hand stitch just to finish off across the bottom. And I'm going to use um, a ladder stitch so hopefully you won't be able to see it so I'm just going to start off the thread underneath so you don't see where the knot is oh. third time lucky and there we do and just go over there a couple of times to secure if you get a knot just try putting the needle through the loop of the knot and pulling it from side to side and that should stretch it out so that's nice and secure and then I'm just going to guide the base attach it to the neck with a ladder stitch so when you pull that together it meets and if you use the same colour thread then you shouldn't be able to see those stitches keep the stitches as small as you can and if you can emulate the size of the machine stitching when you sew neatly it shouldn't look any different to the machine now you can see how again I'm just tucking that under so I get a nice flat base so it fits properly and that's one of the advantages of having the base cut a little bit bigger because uh, you just know that it's going to meet you can fold it in and make that perfect and then when you've stitched it then you will need to press it so I'll just carry on and finish off this <laughs> 